what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so this will be the recap of the episode that just aired on the sci-fi network usa network chucky season one episode two give me something good to eat this episode opens up with us getting yet another flashback seemingly a dream sequence i would say from charles lee ray from chucky as we see a young charles setting again 1965 on halloween looks like he's rummaging through his goodies that he's gotten over the night he comes across an apple that he inspects. It looks like it has a razor blade in it. Now, hesitating at first, he decides to bite down into it with full force, bleeding from the mouth and just a sick smile comes on his face. And that's just like a very interesting way to kick this show off. Just kind of putting you in a bit of a more understanding of this person has been a little bit off off from a young age with something like that happening willingly biting down into a razor blade that you see is in an apple and smiling as your mouth is bleeding. Then we jump to present day Hackensack. Devin is giving a voice over to let us know Halloween is a big crime for the town of Hackensack. He goes over some crimes that have happened before warning his listeners to be ready for anything on Halloween. Then we jump to Uncle Logan, Aunt Bree, and Junior who are on a drive to school. Junior is encouraged by his dad to eat something to improve his athletic performance. Jake has been out of school for a week it seems and before leaving for school he tells his aunt and uncle he appreciates them and he gets some lunch money from them. Now, while he's walking up to school, Oliver, who was teased to be having an affair with Lexi, comes up to Jake and invites him to a party and tells him to bring Chucky along with him. While that's going on, the kids are all whispering about his dad's death and how Jake has been out of school. Lexi and Junior are shown talking about Lexi's Halloween costume. Junior predicts Hermione and some other characters. She ends the conversation by saying it's a surprise, also teasing him about getting involved with Oliver. Jake is at his locker i believe is where he was and then he runs into devin who apologizes for his dad and talks about how he remembers how it was when he lost his dad devin lost his dad when he was young and how it affected him and his family back at junior's house while the kids are at school the housekeeper annie is killed by chucky while she's cleaning the house chucky actually stalks her a bit before killing her and like it's just like a cool little thing to see it always puts me in the in the mentality gives me those child's play vibes child's play 2 vibes where he kills maggie in the opening of the original child's play and just those pov shots of chucky he stalks her a bit before he kills her jake and junior end up coming home and they find annie dead um, and they're arguing about Jake's house manners along the way while they're doing this. They end up calling 911 after Jake insists that they call 911. Aunt Bree and Logan come home to talk about the detective, who is also Devin's mom. Her, I think her name would be Detective Evans. I think it was what her name might be. Devin Evans, I think, is their last name. So she, this would be Detective Evans. One of the detectives that she's with suggests that Jake must be involved since two murders have now happened at his residences. Jake goes into his room and and asks Chucky what he did and he denies it. He then references Andy by saying he's not six years old and he's like basically telling Chucky off throughout this whole thing while Chucky's denying that he did not do this. He's He's been reading uh, Jake's diary though while he's away and it's just a, I'll say journal. He looks like Jake has a journal that he's detailing and Chucky has been reading that while he was away at school. And to make him feel better, because Jake is visibly upset, Chucky mentions that he has a queer kid as well, Glenn and Glenda. Uh, or he had a queer queer kid, because they they were just two souls stuck in one body, and now they're in separate bodies. So he does all that to make Jake feel comfortable around him, and he tries to make it seem like he didn't kill the housekeeper and wants the best for Jake. After observing how people treated Jake, he's just trying to talk him into believing that some people deserve to die, which is, again, another insight as to how Charles has viewed life for a very long time, stemming from a young age. Aunt Bree and Logan are downstairs having a conversation similar to the one Joanne and Phil from Child's Play 2 have, talking about them being qualified to raise Jake. Lexi's little sister, because we jumped to Lexi's house, Lexi's little sister is shown drawing Chucky in great detail, and we get to get a look at Lexi's home life, showing that she walks all over her parents. Her mother, of course, is the mayor of the town, and she's quite manipulative. Lexi, that means she's very manipulative. There's a Doctor Mixter reference from Halloween 2, which was nice to hear. Uh, we then jump back to Devin, who is shown talking to his mom about the accident before she leaves for work. She asks him about Jake trying to get info about Jake's home life and abuse from his dad for being gay. Jake is rocking a black eye to Oliver's party 
he he's going to he's going to Oliver's party. Him and Junior are about to head out to Oliver's party, and yeah, he's rocking a black eye from Chucky. They his aunt and his uncle niggas a costume though. Jake ends up deciding not to go before deciding to ultimately go because he realizes Chucky is gone. Chucky is shown trick or treating in a Hello Kitty mask, but he's only trick or treating to find Oliver's party in the hopes when he goes there he'll kill Lexi. Jake arrives at the party looking for Lexi since Jake thinks that Chucky's gonna hurt her. He ends up getting locked in a closet with Devin though after Oliver tricks him in regards to finding Lexi. Lexi's little sister Caroline is once again shown with Chucky this time actually interacting with him because she wants to play with this doll. She has a fascination with this doll. We see that in the first episode when she was smiling at it. They're playing video games and after hearing about how their houses ran, Caroline's house and Lexi's house is ran. Chucky makes some comments about how their mother is slowly or quickly making his making her way up on making her way high up on his kill list. Uh, Junior and Lexi are making out before Chucky can stab them. They move away though because he's under the bed. Lexi's pretending to be Jake's dad downstairs, getting getting killed downstairs at the party. She's dressed as him, literally pretending to be getting killed the same way Jake's dad was killed. It's very disturbing to see actually. Before leaving, Jake decides to get back at Lexi, but he stops Chucky from killing her instead. Back at home, Chucky checks in on Jake and apologizes about the eye injury. Chucky is manipulating Jake to think that, again, those that are evil to him deserve to be killed. Again, another hint at Chucky's childhood, Charles' childhood, and everything he's gone through as a kid to now his er, his adulthood and how his perception of life and people in general has kind of just been warped into this sick thing. He tells Jake that it's kill or be killed and he should kill lexi before she kills him he lets jake hold his knife and a dark look comes over jake's face as chucky congratulates him telling him he's going to the super bowl and then the credits roll now there are again some stuff that i left out purposely because i want you guys to ex watch this episode and experience it the second episode i would say was in many ways more compelling than the second or than the first episode because now we're entering the territory of seeing is jake really going to become a killer but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and then miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video